it's Natasha. And it's Khalil, aka K Coin Nurse. And we are the co hosts of Woke, Woke and Free. Free. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to our 14th episode of Woken Free. If you've been joining along in our conversation, you know that Woken Free is all about being real and honest with each other and, of course, with you. We're talking about everything and anything that's important to us, to you, the world, and of course, nothing is off the table. So for this episode, we are talking all about Bitcoins. Super, super uh, interesting and uh, complicated subject, but don't worry, we can be woken free about it. <laughs> but before we dive deep into the subject, there's a couple of ground rules we have to cover. First, have you subscribed to Woken Free on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, SoundCloud, or on iHeartRadio? If not, do so now. Secondly, make sure you share this episode with your friends, your family. Tag, you know, at least three or four friends that you know that would love to, to listen to this on our social media where you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Woken Free. As you may know, each week we like to share a little bit about us before we dive into the topic for the episode. Last week we shared our personal 2017 Black Friday lessons learned. This week we're sharing three foods we just can't stand. <laughs> okay, so uh, first of all, I am a proud Jamaican American, but uh, sorry mom and dad, I really can't stand okra. I think it's pretty much like a scary torture uh, thing that's put on this earth to scare children. Um, that's one. Uh, another, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know you just like that. Uh, another thing I don't like is brie. I think that cheese is super scary. I think it has its li a life of its own and it moves and possibly like converses with like the devil. I don't know. It really, it scares me. Uh <laughs> so that's the one cheese you could do without. Yeah, no, if that was the only cheese on earth, I, I guess I would be done eating cheese. That cheese, it stinks and it moves. Like, I can't. No. It, what do you mean it moves? It moves. I've seen it on a table moving by itself, like like gelatin. It's the craziest. I don't. I don't know. Okay. It's that. And this then is some possessed cheese that you've been around. I guess it's. It is. It's like from our our episode about ghosts. I think ghosts live in brie. Like I think it's really weird. And uh, my third item, I would say, is ketchup. Uh, I know everyone, it's American tradition. I love ketchup. I know, to love hot dogs and burgers, and you all slabber this red paint uh, you call food on it, this condiment. I think it's, again, super weird and creepy, and I, I just don't understand why we're just not using hot sauce. Well, they're both red. What's wrong with the ketchup? Why well, are you hating? hot sauce has at least, like, a kick to it. Ketchup is just, like... Just this like red tube of just madness and it's bland and it's ugh. It, no. Eh. Mm -mm. Well, I walk. No, actually, I run away from cauliflower. Oh, Lord. You know, that's just fake broccoli to me. It's white broccoli. <laughs> yeah. That, that's no bueno. Oh, no. <laughs> I also don't like most beans, which I know people love, but yes. it also is the magical fruit. The more you eat it, the more you toot. Whoa, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure if beans are fruits, but that's what the saying is. I know. Goes. That's I've never heard that in you my entire life. Wow. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, we used to sing that as a kid. There was other ones too, but that was just one of them. <laughs> okay. So another one I don't like. My third one is no yams, which are kind of like sweet mm, potatoes. I don't yeah. like those either. They're, they're like the same type of root vegetable, and for me, they're no good. I like potatoes, but the yams and the sweet potatoes are a no go. You see how on his Thanksgiving, he's totally um, on the level of congratulations, you played yourself because uh, yams and sweet potatoes are delicious. But we won't continue down our conversation on food. That definitely can be many, many episodes to come. Yeah. Like I said, we are here to talk about Bitcoin. So, of course, to do this, we must first, what? Define it. Khalil, what do you think Bitcoins are? Bitcoin is the most popular form of cryptocurrencies around. Some purport it as the OG, actually. I should first explain what a cryptocurrency is. According to Investopedia, cryptocurrency is a virtual form of currency which uses cryptography as a form of security, which makes it hard to counterfeit. Its main standout feature is that it's decentralized, meaning no government or outside party can interfere or manipulate it. As an example, a government could not just add more bitcoins to the total pool of coins available. They could mine bitcoins, which we'll talk about a little bit later. 
but they couldn't just produce as many coins as they wanted out of nowhere. The anonymous transaction of Bitcoin also make it easy to engage in money laundering and tax evasion, unfortunately, since a person or party could use multiple Bitcoin addresses to make transactions which are pseudo anonymous. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin addresses are where Bitcoins are sent to and usually used for one transaction. All transactions are actually stored on a public online ledger called the blockchain. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about the blockchain is the ability to store text messages and pictures along with the transaction. Once a transaction is recorded and verified, it cannot be deleted, including the text and picture that was included with it. To touch back on the mining though, which is not feasible by simple computers anymore, mm -hmm. you would join the Bitcoin network where your computer basically works on verifying these transactions that are written to the online ledger. I can't get into the gritty details, but it is a mathematically intensive process that is then verified by other computers on the same Bitcoin network. One can get into this exchange process by first obtaining an offline or online wallet. Then Bitcoin can be obtained by selling products and services in exchange of it, or you can just buy Bitcoin from actual exchanges. Okay, so that was a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. Uh, let's break it down for folks a bit more. So uh, um, if you go to Bitcoin.org, uh, Bitcoin actually that on that website, they have a very simple kind of statement, which is Bitcoin is an innovative payment network and a new kind of money. They elaborate by saying that Bitcoin uses peer to peer technology to operate with no central authority or banks, like you mentioned, managing transactions and the issuing of Bitcoins is carried out collectively by the network, which you definitely uh, elaborated on. Uh, they also go on to say Bitcoin uh, is an open source. Its design is public uh, and nobody owns or controls it and everyone can kind of play in the in the fun here. Uh, USA Today actually is a great article if you're looking to uh, learn a bit more as well and we'll include that on WokenFree.com. They add that this is a Bitcoin is a digital currency, digital payment. It allows you to send and receive like digital tokens and unlike traditional payment networks such as MasterCard, Bitcoin isn't owned by anyone. So again, no central authority. And that means that investors, if you get into this, you're getting into something that has no regulators to protect them in the event of fraud or other negative outcomes. So that's where I think there's a lot of controversy that lies within this uh, form of payment and investment area. Do you think Bitcoin is legitimate then? Hmm. Okay. So a, a, I came across several articles uh, that kind of spoke to the pros and cons of this arena. Su Chang uh, reports on MarketWatch.com about the legitimacy of the Bitcoins and, and kind of how we can look at this conversation. And she points to the commentary from Bank of America Merrill Lynch's head of global commodities and derivatives research, Francisco Blanche. And there are three primary areas that you would look to when discussing like the legitimacy of Bitcoins, safety, liquidity, and returns. When it comes to safety, right, we just mentioned the number one issue, uh, number one with a bullet is the absence of a central governing authority. So yeah, you know, whether you're for or against governmental control or in intervention, it's probably a necessity when it comes to financial uh, investment tools, because otherwise who's, who's going to be, you know, there's no cops and robbers. Like what are we, what are we doing when there's issues, especially things like fraud? Well, you rely on the good people of the internet who are always honest and faithful. Word. So this is not opposite day. Um, <laughs> So that's probably going to be problematic for many people. Another thing is liquidity. So uh, for a digital token to be a currency, it must build to a certain scale, said uh, Bank of America Merrill Lynch's head of global commodities, Blanche. Uh, in some ways, this is exactly what has been happening in recent quarters with the total market value of digital coins, tokens rather, growing exponentially from $1.5 billion to around $87 billion at present. Uh, and put differently, cryptocurrencies have built scale rapidly and are now accepted as a means of payment by some corporations and individuals. So I guess in that regard, it seems like the potential growth and increase in value, which I think I speak to a little bit more as well, um, that makes it seem like it's more legitimate. But again, we still have that safety issue that hangs over. So 
I'm still not uh, a believer yet. And then on the return side, uh, unlike reserve currencies, Bitcoins don't have an interest rate that is set by a central bank. So it's difficult to quantify its returns. And it also doesn't offer much in the way of diversification, given its lack of correlation to other major currencies like precious metals, bonds or uh, equity. So all in all, I would say uh, I think it's legitimate, but it's it definitely is a riskier form of currency. From a technical standpoint, Bitcoin does allow one to purchase goods and has over the past year gone from 1000 US dollars to over $11,000, mm -hmm. according to Coindesk Bitcoin price index. Their price index value is calculated by taking the average selling price of Bitcoin among the leading global exchange agencies. But it does have a few problems highlighted by the paper blockchains and bitcoins regulatory responses to cryptocurrencies by andres guatamus and chris marston mm -hmm. lack of transparency failing anonymity instability lack of replicability deflation <laughs> security and bitcoin theft growing centrality and computational inefficiencies the lack of transparency is a key feature but it also remains a problem in terms of oversight and review. It's said that there are possibly exchange bots that have manipulated the price of Bitcoin to drive it up. <laughs> Failing anonymity, although the currency is encrypted, places that accept it, like the online stores and Bitcoin exchanges, collect personal information like email and IP addresses, credit cards, bank account details, etc. So are you actually anonymous during these transactions if you're giving out this information just to obtain Bitcoin? Mm. The instability of Bitcoin because the price went from $1,100 to $500 in a few days during one particular crash. Mm -hmm. The lack of replicability is if your wallet is lost, it's gone forever and can't be recovered by anyone. Mm -hmm. There's, they're just gone. The funds are never to be used ever again. Mm -hmm. And deflation. Some people acquire the currency as a long-term investment instead of using it for the exchange of goods and services. So in the early days of Bitcoin, an individual reportedly spend... 10,000 bitcoins just to buy pizza. In a deflationary economy, this person feels that they lost greatly as the currency's value has gone up from then. You're getting more than one pizza for 10,000 bitcoins now. <laughs> Security and bitcoin theft. Although bitcoin itself is very secure, the wallet and exchange agencies are a weak link that have been attacked. Mt. Gox was one of the largest exchanges that went bankrupt after it lost over 700,000 bitcoins which were worth over 470 million. There was more to this story as they recovered some of the coins and found out that the CEO was altering the balance of the exchange and more. Growing centrality, any entity controlling 51% of the mining power would accrue all of the Bitcoins mined while in majority. The controlling mining conglomerate could send false information to the blockchain, which would amount to altering transaction history. This is a big no-no for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Computational inefficiencies. The verification process, the mining done by the computers, is said to require the same amount of energy that is consumed by all of Ireland. Mm, wow. Okay. So, again, more of a mouth, uh, mouthful <laughs> right there. Uh, overall, would you say you'd want to invest in Bitcoin? It may look like a really lucrative form of investing, but how much has it risen in value already? Is there any more room for growth? Mm. For me, I don't know if I'd want to use it as an investment, but it'd be kind of interesting just to have some Bitcoin for future use. I'm kind of like, first of all, the name is really funny. I don't know if what man created that name, but like it just makes me think of like, I don't know, like fake monopoly. And so like when I think of Bitcoin, I'm just like, ooh, can there be like a monopoly version where like I could just pretend to play on an app with it or maybe I'm just alone on that. So it doesn't make you think of bits and bytes. No, it makes me think Computer of... language. Oh, okay. Interesting. Ones and zeros. No, yeah, it just makes me sound think of like a toy, like a toy. I don't know, but I, I, personally, I'm not. It really because it actually does describe what it is. It Bitcoin, it is, is made. Yeah. Bitcoin is made up of bits. Gotcha. Okay, like <laughs> the bits the tech, compose yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Ones um, and zeros are what represent the coin, and that's what the computer reads. Interesting. I mean, I agree with you. I think the and value processes. being that it's gone from over one thousand to like eleven thousand in between twenty sixteen and twenty seventeen makes me wonder if, uh, yeah, like how much more is this going to rise? And you know, if you haven't already got in, can it have you missed the boat? So, personally, again, not. I don't think I'm convinced.
to to join on that bandwagon. At least as an investment. Not I'm right saying. now. No. Mm-mm. But not even just for general use. Um, like if it like went down <laughs> <laughs> in price. If we're talking uh, dollars and bits, <laughs> <laughs> not thousands and bits. But what you gonna do? I don't know. I'm also open to hearing other people's perspectives. So for all you out here listening, um, if you if you're hearing us and you're like, "Are you kidding me?" Let <laughs> You know, share your th- thoughts. Don't be in your feelings by yourself. Like, let somebody know. <laughs> yeah, let us know how you feel. How long do you think Bitcoins will be around then? Ah, uh, so you want me to put my seer hat on? Um, <laughs> Might as well. You're good at it. True, true facts you speak. Uh, okay, so I came across this Fortune article by Robert Hackett, and he refers to like financial experts who kind of chime in when it comes to the longevity of Bitcoins. And uh, they share that, you know, people are very enthusiastic about this uh, type of currency uh, in terms of five to 10 years, Bitcoin and another uh, cryptocurrency they refer to as Ether will be around, I bet, by Balaji Surinvasan. That's one financial expert. Other experts kind of chimed in and said they think it's fascinating. They think there's more to stay tuned. So I uh, I don't think it's going away uh, because also I had, I've seen that there's, I think, over 1,300 types of cryptocurrency so bitcoin is just one of them it's the more prevailing one i believe that's you know kind of hot hot like fire um but uh, i think that this new uh, arena of finance and wealth management isn't gonna go away i think it's probably only gonna get more bigger and more complicated i think even if bitcoin were to permanently crash and people stopped using it for some reason Mm -hmm. they would jump to one of the other cryptocurrencies like you were talking about there's 1300 more so I think those would actually rise up among the ashes of Bitcoin. True. Even without true. Bitcoin, you'll have Ethereum and mm-hmm. other things pop up. So. Yeah, you'll have just like like it'll, there's a phoenix I think they're somewhere. Around to stay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you think personally uh, that Bitcoin is safer than other traditional currency? Well, it depends on your definition of safe. Mm-hmm. Safe like someone can't counterfeit my money. Or like my money is my my own. Mm -hmm. Inherently, Bitcoin is risky because there is no oversight like we were mentioning. Mm -hmm. Also mentioned earlier, if a conglomerate makes up more than 51% of the Bitcoin network, they can start manipulating the transactions and start to really break down the system since all the checks Mm. rely on the computers verifying each other. So you can think of it as like bad actors taking over the system. Interesting. I, I don't want to call them viruses, but imagine if they just got in there and they just decided hey bitcoin is worth two dollars they can actually do that by altering the transactions and changing it to whatever they want Interesting. and they can bring the entire price of bitcoin down or up or well, you they can would, actually do you anything make it go up why would you manipulate it down because then they can purchase all the bitcoins for oh, cheaper or even saying. put the bitcoins in their in their own wallets for cheaper and then mm, bring and the then price right back, back up. up okay and, and that's just an example there's many other elaborate plans you can gotcha. do but it does rely on computers being like honest most of the mm-hmm. computers on the network doing the right thing mm-hmm. interesting yeah i i think when i came across some resources as well it's uh because again there's no check and balance with this type of currency that by default it can't be a more safer form of currency than traditional currency because you need a, a head of government you need someone who's going to say no 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 guys that's illegal Ugh. let's <laughs> Try to not, you know, screw with people's money like that or or that issue that you're saying that if, if there could be uh, someone who takes up 51% and it's kind of a conglomerate in the space, that's yeah. super, super risky. Who's going to ever prevent that from happening? So by default, I would say no. Yeah. So th- the only thing, though, is I don't know if the government is the end all say all because the government is also run by people who can be bad actors as well. Yeah. Which happens as well. So there's there we we've all heard of political corruption. So mm-hmm. just having a government there might not be enough. You need to have like rules in place where people can check the government and the government can check Bitcoin. It has to be kind of like a circle of checks where no party can just say, yeah. "Hey, we're gonna do this," and that's that is that's the lay of the. I mean, the I land. just think similar to how our current like we never take look at the money in our wallet and say, "Is this really a dollar?" Right? Like so currently. Yeah. <laughs> 
we're well, existing in at least in yeah. the United States. But um, but also we have like some rapid inflation where you know milk is is ex- more, much more expensive now than it was in the past. So I don't know. Telling? Yes, for all those who drink um, lactate out there. <laughs> it is not a game, guys. It's like six ninety nine by certain supermarket. So yeah, that is not funny. <laughs> That's oh, you fancy. That's I am. Fancy I, listen, a bad and bougie chicks, <laughs> raise your hands. <laughs> uh, do you think you can still make money off Bitcoin? Yeah, I think you definitely can still make some money. You just got to be willing to take the risks because mm. the, the, it's gone up by so much in this past year. I think there's a little bit, there's there's something left in it that's going to still bring it up. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not, it's, it's, it's risky, but there can be a payoff in it. I think there's some room left for Bitcoin to grow. Okay. Uh, in this Guardian article that I came across, it elaborated more on the mining conversation that you mentioned earlier. And uh, it goes on to say, Bitcoins are mined by people solving problems with computers. In the beginning, the best way to make money from Bitcoins was to mine them with a home PC. However, Bitcoin mining be- has become more difficult. The more miners there are, uh, and today you need specialized hardware and you need to join a mining pool where a large number of miners work together and share the results. Coins are not pure profit because of the cost of the hardware and the electricity consumed when mining. Also, you don't know what Bitcoins will be worth when you start mining them. And uh, however, um, you know, there and there's that issue or conversation of there are lots of other different types of cryptocurrencies out there. So can you make money? Yes. I don't think it's as simple as it was probably a couple of years ago, but I agree. I think that there's money on the table there. Yeah. Mining is probably not the way you're going to do it because you've got to, as you were saying, join a big pool and mm-hmm. have a lot of computational power. Oh, yes. But I think as an investment, you can make some money off it. Mm-hmm. What's the future of Bitcoin? Mm. So... Again, uh, I'm not a seer, uh, <laughs> nor am I a, a, a predictor of, of finance. But I think that this type, this the reason why there must be a reason why the value has gone up so incredibly between last year and this year. And I think that um, now more than ever, I keep seeing the conversation of Bitcoin uh, be very prominent in, in major media outlets. And I think that there is probably a more money to be had, potentially more scandals to, to take place in the space. And I think that uh, if the purpose of this whole currency, as you were saying in the beginning of this episode, was to have this like anonymous space for people to invest and exchange money, then um, you know, given and purchase goods and purchase goods. So, given the climate of our world and how precarious things are getting, because we just don't know what powers will be, will make decisions. You know who I'm talking about, and. Um, <laughs> I think that, um, you know, I think that this could potentially be a resource for people, uh, and, uh, and in, and, and not, all, not all, all in a bad way, but you know, cause I think that, you know, maybe you want to donate like to charities with your Bitcoins, right? Like, yeah, I you mean, can donate I think it's, you know, not be tracked. Yeah. People, you know, not everything has to be doom and gloom. I think that there's a lot of good that you probably can do with this system. So I think that it's probably going to be accepted in more places and it's just going to, again, be more, more common, right? Before when something is new, everyone's like, oh no, you can't touch it. Right. Like you wouldn't touch it with the flag. And then all of a sudden you're like wrapped in this flag. So <laughs> I think there's, progress and probably uh, more integration in our world yeah i think we all need to carefully watch bitcoin Mm -hmm. the idea of a decentralized currency with security built in that's the future of all currencies Mm. i imagine a world where there's one main currency Mm -hmm. easily exchanged by every other country in the planet Mm -hmm. doesn't have to be bitcoin but it most likely will be a form of cryptocurrency interesting so then you get past the whole um dollar for pounds and dollar yeah, for pesos. Yeah, you don't have to do this whole exchange thing. Interesting. You just go into the store and say, I'll take that tomato. 1,300 bitcoins. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> now who's done. bad and bougie? <laughs> <laughs> That's a special tomato. Listen. <laughs> that tomato is organically grown and has all the nutrients you can ever need. I feel like we need to eat food because <laughs> we keep going back to but food. But no, we can't make ketchup though. Ugh, no, please right. not horrify me. No ketchup me for though the with day. the tomato. Just no. make some hot sauce with some peppers, All right? Jamaica, Jamaica. 
it is scenario time. Scenario one. While walking down a fresh, revitalized part of the city, you're approached by a well-dressed man in a suit that says he wants to sell you his Bitcoin wallet for $200. He claims that the current value of his wallet is $1,000, but he has made enough money from Bitcoin and is looking to exit now. Do you pass up this offer of a lifetime? Is this man on drugs? He's well-dressed. <laughs> I think he's wearing an Armani suit or something. Armani, okay. Um, and he's just trying to feel, he, like, this is his good deed for the day kind of thing. Yeah, I guess he's just, <laughs> he just, he just wants to give to the needy. He wants to stop being greedy. Ah, you rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm very nervous by this proposition. Can you see the value of the wallet or no? You just have to no. take him on his word. Oh, You're just, Lord. he's just going to hand you a paper and on that paper is the address oh, of the yeah. wallet. On this paper, yeah. You technically could, I mean, if you, you could check it. Go to the ledger it. and... Or, well, you can download an app and you can actually check the value of the wallet. So okay. technically so, you can yeah, do it. So, yeah, I would say if I would only accept this offer, uh, his good deed of the day, if I checked and saw the actual value of the wallet and I didn't just take him on his word because, as you said, uh, and despite everyone's good intention to be honest all the time, sadly they fail. So uh, that would be my answer. So if you're able to check it, then you'll actually go for the deal Correct. because he, you verified his claim. Correct. Uh, yes. And and how also uh, there's no weird way that I have to pay him, right? I can just give him money. Well, it's, it's... got to be straight cash. He's not taking a credit card. Okay. He doesn't have any. All right. I think, that's, I think that's fair enough. Yeah. So you would do it as long as you verified it. And then I wasn't going to be jumped when I go to my ATM to get my No, you're, you're in a nice part of the city. Yeah, you're yeah, okay, yeah. actually. Okay. You're okay. It's broad daylight. It's it's right. at, it's it's weird that he just chose you out of all the people on the street. Well, maybe just he that saw way. my curly hair and was really happy with me. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. I'm not a narcissist. Don't worry. <laughs> so you say. Okay, sir. What's your answer? My answer is... I would hand over the $200 faster than he can say, hello, Jello. Okay, here we go again with the rhymes. <laughs> That's Obviously, not even we have, saying, we have but... to wrap it our next episode, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, it's only 200 bucks, so hey, you lose some, you win some. Again, bad and bougie. Scenario two. Bitcoin has dropped 50% to about $700. It seemed as if the price would only go up and up and up. Mm -hmm. Do you buy in and wait for what you think will be the inevitable sky high gains? Ooh, uh, again, very nerve wracking question. So first of all, you're in a situation where something is on the decline for you to assume that it's going to rise, rise back again, unless you have verifiable information that support that projection. Mm -hmm. Um, which is hard, right? Because yeah, similar to as if Bitcoin. you were as similar to if you were talking about the stock market, um, nothing's truly verifiable, right? Like you just have to just kind of look at projections and see. Uh, it depends how uh, you know how risky do you feel like being with your cash, and uh, how much money do you have to spare? I think that the biggest thing with investments is it's not about you know are you willing to take the risk, but can you afford to take the risk, right? So I think that you have to have a conversation with yourself and whoever's in. In, that makes decisions with you for your household uh, finance and uh, do a pro and con list. Uh, try to do your best due diligence and decide. Me personally, uh, my answer is no. Wow, I would jump on this deal again. Wow. I mean, it, it dropped by 50% and you, it, it, it's going to be around <laughs> for years to come. So come on now. You're going to miss out on a deal of a lifetime? Yeah, you're going to invest when it's on the down. Yeah, that makes sense. When well, hopefully, people are losing money. Yeah. Just hopefully it doesn't go to seven cents. Exactly. Then you get <laughs> exactly. So but, I'll be sitting pretty but you know and you sit but, but there you crying. Think, oh, you could think about that as like, what what would you have done with that $700? Would you have just bought Starbucks and gone to the movies? Just think about it like that. Just You're going to have to shade, do less Starbucks. Throwing shade. Less movies. Less bars. <laughs> Well, I'm not going Less to bar, but I, I this is for every like, oh, this okay. is for everybody though. I'm just saying, like, what do people do with their seven hundred dollars? It's a lot of money, but it's a, it's a risk you take. It's it's kind of like gambling. Can you afford to take the risk? It's not about the risk, right? Everyone can everyone can be risky. Almost but anybody can, can afford, afford yeah. that. If they took mm -hmm. those things that they were going to do and then decided not to do them, yeah, they would be able to afford Absolutely. it. Absolutely. They said, hey, you know what? No club for. Six more months. I don't know how much it costs you to go to the club. Absolutely. Listen, but uh, do that. shout out to Gary Vaynerchuk. He tells everyone to eat, 
eat that crow, eat that dirt and chill out and make the decisions that you should be making when it comes to getting the life that you want for yourself. So absolutely, if it's a matter of you really think this is going to turn around and that $700 turns into $700,000, F yeah, right? Like, but if you don't necessarily feel that within, personally, based on that scenario, I don't feel that. I feel yeah. like potentially that 700 then drops down to 400, then drops down to 250, then turns back around. Then I'm like, wow, Khalil, wasn't that fun? Like, Oh, why are you looking at me? It was your choice. You had the choice of it, the bottom. That's why I said no, bad and bougie. No. I hit the bot. I'm throwing my money at the screen right now. I want that Bitcoin. No. It's not no. taking the money. I'm throwing my cash at Let's it. Let's just it's go not to Vegas it. and play blackjack then. I mean... <laughs> yeah, we can do that too. Always yeah. bet black. <laughs> bet on black. Oh, but you're thinking of, you're thinking of roulette. Or oh, roulette, my bad. Yeah, yeah roulette. The roulette, fun, yeah. Yes. It's oh, real I fun love to be roulette. had there. Especially with the zeros and double zeros. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other thing. It's the same thing as your bitcoins. No, the bitcoin is a little... <laughs> This is, a, this is a lot different. I can buy goods and services with this Bitcoin. True. As long as it's not worth seven cents, then I don't... Can you, can you I get love a bazooka how you're jump going with that? From, no, you can't actually. I don't know what you can get for seven cents. And that's in U.S. currency for all our international <laughs> listeners. Seven cents. I don't know. What could you do with seven cents? Uh, the same well, thing you could do with seven pesos, probably. Nah. <laughs> Scenario three. Your friend wants a Bitcoin wallet and ask your advice on what type of wallet they should purchase. There is the option of an offline wallet that they manage manually or an online wallet managed by a reputable third party who's existed for a couple of years incident free. Which type of wallet do you think is better? Uh, so I love control Virgo city. Uh, I'd probably choose the offline wallet that I manage manually um, because I don't, even though the reputable third party has gone incident three for incident free for many years, there's no assurance that they would not have an incident down the road as we've seen, even with like data breaches from companies who should not have had data breaches um <laughs> yes. so far too many yeah so yeah i said given given the nature of how our world you know the the hacker world uh no i, I think i just manage it on my own me too i'm in agreement definitely mm -hmm. would manage offline so you there's a there's a big risk managing it offline because if you don't back it up and your computer goes down or you haven't written it down mm -hmm. you know that if you lose those numbers that you're done you lose all your money mm -hmm. there is no recovery Okay. So that's the one issue with it. With the online party, they back it up and supposedly have it safeguarded from hackers. But mm. we know how that is. You know, it's it's risky. So it's true. The 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 real thing is, I guess, how how much do you trust the cloud and yeah. the people that run the cloud? I'm not a big fan of the cloud stuff. Like yeah. I I'll use it, but at the end of the day, I like to have a backup offline that I can always access and mm -hmm. I know where it is. I know how secure it is and. That just seems like an easier method to go for me. Yeah, the money you would take in paying with this uh, investment company, you could just buy 10 different backup servers, right? And just back up, like, back up, back up crazy. Like, so that, you know, you have uh, endless amounts of resources that give you your wallet number and you'll never lose it. So that's where, we're st that's where we stand with that, right? Yep. All right. So, oh my, it is that time again. We have come to the end of our 14th episode of Woke, Woke and Free. free. And oh my, we had a lot of fun talking about bitcoins, uh, food, uh, bad and bougie. Uh <laughs> Talk about yourself, wifey. Okay, and ketchup. Ugh, ugh, I can't. Ketchup. Ugh, I can't. So, as per usual, will I leave you hanging for what our next episode is all about? On our next episode, we will be talking all about the infamous sexual harassment. When will sexual assault finally be considered wrong in our society? So to hear this topic, follow us on social media to follow along in the conversation and make sure you tune in next week for Woken Free Wednesday to join the conversation at www.wokenfree.com. If you want to be a guest on our show, which I know you do, because uh, I know you're in your feelings about several things that we talk about, 
please, please, please submit a topic for an upcoming episode. Share how you felt about a past episode on our Contact Us page at WokenFree.com. And I cannot stress again, you will always find us, aka Tasha, on <laughs> Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, Twitter, uh, on at Woken Free. So hit me up, holler at your girl. Let us know what you're thinking about and how you want to get involved. If you didn't already subscribe, please do share the episode and make sure you come back to join the conversation every Wednesday for Woken Free Wednesdays. Till next time.